everybody and welcome to St Mary's in Sullington where we're thin on the ground because of the summer holidays but it's great to be here in God's presence. It doesn't matter how many come because we are surrounded by the heavenly hosts. We meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The word was made flesh and, and we beheld his glory. And in the quiet, let's just bask in that glory. God as a loving God who is forgiving to those who say sorry and we come knowing that our lives are not perfect. We leave before God our sins and we walk away forgiven. Where we have failed to love you God with all our soul and strength and mind, Jesus Christ, Christ Son of God, God have, have mercy upon us. Where we have failed to love our brother, our sister, our neighbour, Jesus Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, God have, have mercy upon us. Where we have failed to love our friends and refused to love our enemies, Jesus Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, God have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Where we have failed to love ourselves and neglected your image within us, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, Son of God, God have, have mercy upon us. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20. The kingdom in heaven is like this. Once there was a man who went out early in the morning to hire some men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them the regular wage, a silver coin for the day, and he sent them out to work in his vineyard. He went out again to the marketplace at nine o'clock and saw some other men standing doing nothing, and he said to them, you also go and work in the vineyard and I will pay you a fair wage. So they went. At 12 o'clock and again at three o'clock he did the same thing. And it was nearly five o'clock when he went to the marketplace once more and saw some other men standing there. Why are you wasting the whole day here doing nothing, he said to them. No one hired us, they answered. Well then, you go and work in my vineyard, he told them. And when evening came, the owner told the foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with those who were hired last and ending with those who were hired first. The men who had begun work at five o'clock were paid a silver coin each, and so were the men who had been hired first, and when they came to be paid they thought they would get more, but they too were given a silver coin. They took their money and started grumbling against the employer. These men, who were hired and worked only this last hour, they said, while we have put up with a whole day's work in the hot sun, and yet you pay us all the same. Listen, friend, the owner said to him. I have not cheated you. After all, you agreed to do a day's work for one silver coin. Now take your pay and go home. I want to give this man who was hired last as much as I have given you. Don't I have the right to do what I wish with my own money or to be, or to be generous? And why are you jealous of my generosity? And Jesus concluded, so those who are last will be first and those who are first will be last.
just a short reflection on what we've just heard, it is shameful to see how entitled human beings can feel. It's, it's very sad when we realise that we're doing it ourselves and we, we look at the effort that we put into something and we judge those around us and we think we deserve more. And what Jesus is saying here is actually those who deserve more need humility and those who seemingly deserve less are the ones who will be lifted up. And that's the topsy-turvy way in which God tells us to live our life. The ones who seemingly are the greatest need to kneel and the ones who are the least will be lifted up. And in our prayer in a moment we will be praying particularly for violence around the world and for its peace. Um, we're going to be thinking particularly about the situation in Afghanistan and um, praying for peace around the world. There is, there is a sort of entitlement that we've seen in our world in the last generation where we think we can go in and make better other people's situations. We've done it before and have ended up causing more hurt and more pain. But this is not a political sermon. I think it's just a reminder that we're not as great as we think we are and we should look after the ones who are least and make sure that they have as much as we do, whether they seem to have earned it or not. Very challenging. But as part of our reflection, I'm just going to read through as a hymn, hymn number 429. O oh Lord, the clouds are gathering, the fire of judgment burns, how we have fallen. O oh Lord, you stand appalled to see your laws of love so scorned and lives so broken. O oh Lord, over the nations now, where is the dove of peace? Her wings are broken. O oh Lord, while precious children starve, the tools of war increase and their bread is stolen. O oh Lord, dark powers are poised to flood our streets with hate and fear. We must awaken. O oh Lord, let your love reclaim the lives that sin would sweep away and let your kingdom come. Yet, O oh Lord, your glorious cross shall tower triumphant in this land, evil confounding. Through the fire, your suffering church display the glories of her Christ, praises resounding. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Restore us, Lord. Revive your church again. Let justice flow like rivers and righteousness like a never failing stream. bring forward our time of prayer and continue to pray for peace. Especially we pray for the country of Afghanistan. We pray for those whose lives are in danger, those who are confused, those who are angry, those who are fighting and those who are caught up in the middle. Lord, we pray for those whose rights will have been taken away. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for those who are 
unable to fend for themselves. We pray for those with physical and uh, neurological disabilities who will have been reduced in society. May we pray for women who will have lost their jobs and lost their education and their choices. countries around the world where those in leadership are more tempted by bribes and offers of making their own life better than the lives of the people they are supposed to be helping. We pray for those countries who believe that they are better than others. And we pray that, ourselves included, we will be humbled and rather than trying to enforce our way of life, that we will encourage and enable others to live the best that they can. This time of financial difficulty around the world, we pray that we can still be generous and give to those in need. Lord, over the nations now, where is the dove of peace? Her wings are broken. Our Lord, while precious children starve, the tools of war increase, their bread is broken. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Restore us, Lord. Revive your church again. Let justice flow like rivers and righteousness like a never-failing stream. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peacemakers who sow in peace, raise a harvest of righteousness. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank and Lord also Lord. with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us be yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and we lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will bring the bread and the wine to you, but for those at home, be assured that those who wish to take communion but are unable to for reasons of great sickness, receive the same blessing, even though they don't eat with their mouth.
Let us pray. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Your Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Please take us, guide us and inspire us, because it is all about what with you we can become, starting here and now. Amen. Just to let you know that this Sunday coming, there will be an 8.30 um, Celtic Communion prayer, uh, Celtic Communion here, um, followed by 10.30 morning prayer, and there will be a 10.30 Communion at Bacon Village Hall. And um, for those who are not able to come to church, there will be another Zoom service in two weeks as well. And all information can be found on our websites. And for those at home, there's a link to our websites after this video. So we've ended up here because God wanted us to be here today and I pray that the challenge to live with others first in our hearts is one we can take and live today and in the days to come. So we go asking God's blessing and asking God's strength. So may the God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and with those you love, now and always. Amen.